Hello, this is Justin from The Tech Train here, and I'm going to show you how to create mind maps and do brainstorming in Microsoft Word. I know my students recently, who have just finished their GCSE exams, have been creating a huge number of mind maps and doing a whole lot of brainstorming to help them with their revision. But I'm going to show you three little known tools that you may well not know even exist that are in Microsoft Word that can help you really, really quickly create effective brainstorming and mind maps without any bother at all. So this brainstorming or mind map that you see here is created in Microsoft Word. And to do that, I've created a number of, uh, or used a number of tools that quite a lot of people don't seem to realize actually exist within Microsoft Word. So I'm gonna show you uh, how to create something like this in just a matter of a few moments. I'm gonna start with a brand new document, there we are. And because uh, generally mind maps seem to, to work best when they are uh, landscape, I'm going to go into layout. I'm going to change the orientation to landscape. And I'm also going to widen the margins. We have quite a, a lot of waste of space at the top and the left hand side. So I'm going to change the margins to narrow just so that we maximize the amount of page. I also quite like changing the page color as well, making it something that's a, a little uh, easier on the eye perhaps. Although this won't print uh, the color of the page, should you print this, it's just a lot easier, I think, when you're looking at it on the screen. So the first thing that people don't often realize exists as a feature within Microsoft Word is that you don't have to start typing at the top uh, or on the left-hand side. In fact, if you double-click anywhere on the page, you can start typing just exactly there. So if right in the center of this page I double click, I can start typing out my first topic. Uh, let's do one for real, so let's type out data. Uh, I'll increase the font size a little bit just so that we can see this more clearly. There we are. So I've double clicked in the middle of the page and I've been able to write that word data exactly there. Now let's do, do another couple of uh, topics. So let's put input over here. So again, I want the word input here. I just double click and there is the text pointer at exactly that put, uh, point. So we'll put input there and I want output over here. So again, double click <clears throat> and there's the word output. Uh, now perhaps I want the word compression down here. So again, double click and type the word compression. So you can actually uh, click and type anywhere on the page and Microsoft Word will allow you to type in that exact location. It's surprising I find how many people don't realize that Microsoft Word lets you do that now. Uh, but that method will allow you to create uh, mind maps very, very easily. Uh, however, of course, mind maps are nothing without lines connecting each of these words. So what I suggest you do here, rather than keep going up to the insert tab and then clicking on shapes and then clicking on the line tool, which is three clicks too many really, um, what I would do is add the shapes tool to your quick toolbar. Um, now the way to do that, your quick toolbar, which will appear at the top, usually has the save button and the undo button already in it. If you click on the little arrow on the right hand side of it and you choose more commands, you can actually choose to add any of the commands available in Word in any of the sub menus so it appears right there at the top. So if we change from popular commands to all commands, uh, you can see that you can scroll down and there's a huge number here uh, and we'll be able to find the shapes option there. Um, you see I've already added mine here, draw a shape. So that's already included. Uh, you can add any of these uh, buttons you like. Just click on uh, an option and then click add. You can remove it by selecting it on the right hand side and removing it. Uh, and that way you'll have the shapes tool available in the quick toolbar. Now to, uh, to add a line is fairly easy, of course. Click on that, there's our line, and we can draw a line between, in this case, data and input. But we don't like the style of that line. So perhaps what I might do is click that line, uh, change the color to black, perhaps change it so that it's a little thicker, and possibly even change it so that it is a dotted line rather than a solid line. But what we don't want to have to do 
is every time we draw a line, uh, having to keep on restyling like that. An option, of course, would be to copy and paste this line, but that's going to get really fiddly as well. So here's a second feature that you may not be aware of, and that is that once you've created a shape, or in this case a line, and you've adjusted the, uh, the style to look just how you want, you can right-click on that shape and choose Set as Default Line. So now, uh, having done that, if I click on my Shapes tool again and choose the Line tool, I can draw a line from data to output and it retains the style that I chose before. So I can again click on the Line tool and go from data to compression and there is the line style. So once you've created a style of line, you can then set that as the default style and use that to connect all of your ideas. So let's perhaps add another couple of ideas here. Uh, for output, we'll have monitor and we'll have printer and we'll have speaker. So you see again how I can just simply click and type anywhere I want or double click and type. And then using the quick launch bar or quick toolbar rather, I can select my line tool and again, just simply draw those lines from my key points to the sub points and this style will be retained. So you can see there by double clicking anywhere on the page and by using a default line style and adding that default line style to your quick toolbar, you can very quickly create uh, mind maps or brainstorming ideas um, really, really easily. However, here's a third thing that you may again not be aware of, and that is that if you wanted to color some of these, as you saw that I did before, um, that could be really, really fiddly. If you're wanting to try and select a word, change the color, then select another word, change the color. Let's, for example, say that I wanted all of these green points here red. Uh, many people I know would simply select that word and then go up and change the color to red like that, then select the next word and change the color to red um, and so forth. And of course that is possible, but it's also really fiddly. So if you wanted to set a whole section of these, let's set that back to green. You can select multiple non-consecutive areas of text by holding down the control key on your keyboard. So if I double click compression there, which selects the whole of that word, I can now hold down the control key and double click these words and select all of those whilst holding control down and just double clicking. Very, very easy. Uh, and now I've selected all of those, I can simply change the color of that uh, and that affects all of them, of course. So that would be a really simple way of being able to change the color or the style of a whole load of points within your mind map or your brainstorm. So three tools there that um, many people I come across don't know, they aren't aware that those tools exist, and knowing that they do means you or your students can create some really good looking mind maps really, really simply right within Microsoft Word. So I hope that was useful for you. Um, if any of these points were new to you, do leave a comment below. Let me know uh, which ones you haven't come across before. If you did find this useful and you think you might pass this on to your students or you might use this for yourself, uh, then please do like this video. Uh, clicking that like button does make a real difference. Uh, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do so and click the little bell so that you're notified when a new video goes live. So please do click like, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and I will try my best to respond to those. And thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.